Today I want to show you guys how you can create animated props, not only just standing ones, this was probably one of the most requested, requested in the last video, um, where you guys wanted to know how you would do this with animated smashes or anything else that is available in these blueprint classes. So today I'm going to show you that quickly, it is super simple and super easy to do. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. What we're going to create is something like this, where you have an animated prop that you can actually pick up, move around and you can even scale it, rotate it, you can do whatever it wants. Basically the same thing as you could do with Fortnite props um, and obviously you can also go here and attach devices to it, for example a boss fight. But how would you do this? There's actually nothing special or different to the other one that we did. We have to do the same thing, um, so if you haven't watched that first video you can do that as well, it works the same way basically. But you have to do a few key different things. So the first thing first, we're gonna open up a new blueprint class, I'm gonna open that up, we're gonna get our little window here, we're gonna create a prop, same thing as before, we can name that prop to animate it. Once inside the blueprint class, um, this is obviously the same thing. We can look for our meshes and we can find the static mesh here. So we can see, we can add a static mesh, but that is not how you do animations. You need a skeleton mesh and you need obviously the animation. So how do we get the animation in here? There's, there obviously is no option to put a skeleton mesh in here. There's two things that we can do. We can either click on this little plus sign over here and then add a skeleton mesh, which is the one that you need for animations. You can basically also do this procedure with anything else, but let's do this with the skeleton mesh. So I imported a bunch of animations, which I previously made in the Unreal Engine, you can just migrate them into UFN, uh, there should be no problem with that. Um, and this should somewhere here have a skeleton mesh. So and we can see here that we down here we have a, a control rig which we can technically also put in there. And we have the skeleton mesh and we have the other skeleton mesh. So, so we want to import the pink one and you can actually just drag and drop this into here. And now you can see that something new got created here which is a skeleton mesh. So we can technically also, as I already said earlier, we can just go on here add a skeleton mesh. Then we have the skeleton mesh in here as well. And now we can just go here to the skeleton mesh asset and just apply our uh, Chun-Li. And we have it in here. It doesn't do anything yet because we haven't applied any animation. You have to go to the animations tab over here and then just choose the animation that you want. So for example, we can just use the arms up animation here and now we can press compile and save. So you're technically not done here. I'm quickly going to show you what happens if you just put this in. Okay, so we can have it in our game, but it doesn't really work yet um, as a prop. It works, it will do the animation, but it doesn't allow us to move it around or attach props to it. So if we push this to Fortnite, you can see that our channels are still here. And this one is the new one that we just added with the arms up animation. So, okay, so now everything, all right, everything loaded in and now you can see that the animation loaded, everything looks perfectly fine. But if I select this one, I can move it around, but I cannot do this with this one. It is not working yet. And the reason for that is that we need a static mesh which the phone can grab on. All right, so let's go back into our editor, open the animated mesh, and now we need to go on the top here and actually add a static mesh. So, for example, we can just click on this button here, and let's just use the default cube here. So, now we have this random cube here floating around, and no worries, we will fix that in a second. Um, but if we now go into the game and compile and save this, so we can see now that the cube has loaded in, and now we can actually move her around, and we can actually do all the things that we wanted to do. So we can scale her up, we can do whatever, but obviously the cube is not really that visually pleasing and we might not want the cube to be there. So how would you fix this? Um, you would probably make this a little bit more tighter and more fit the character, but for our case it doesn't really matter. So what we're going to do is just create a material which is invisible, which then we can apply to this one and can use it without having the cube in our way the entire time. So, so what we're gonna do is go into our content browser, create a new material. So in here we do not have to do a lot. Actually, the only thing you need to do really is to change the blend mode to translucent. Uh, and we're gonna need something that changes the opacity. So we're gonna click on here, drag that out. We're gonna type constant, which is just a value. Uh, and then this is by default to zero, which, uh, which is obviously exactly what we want. We can save that, and now all we and now we all we have, and now all we have to do is just apply the material to the cube. So we can go here, and then we look for new material. I think we called it, or we didn't really change anything. And now you can see the cube is invisible. We can press uh, compile and save. So now you can see that in game the cube already is changing because obviously we applied a different texture, um, which then will allow us to basically have an invisible collision box for our Chun Li character, which we then can move around without having an ugly cube inside of her. All right, and now you can see the cube moved away. We can see her legs again, and we can obviously move her around, but obviously only at the bottom. So if we go a little bit on top here, the cube is not there, so we cannot move her there. So that's why I would recommend making the cube uh, or whatever you're gonna create um, as big as the character that you want to move. And then we can obviously create gameplay with her. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys back in the next one. Bye.